Good day, viewers. How the devil are you? Hoag's here, talking at you live from my own living room. Um, bit of an ego trip, isn't it? Sort of like um, Fidel Castro used to telecast from his bedroom to the nation every night, honey. I don't wear pyjamas, so I'm sparing you that spectacle. Uh, listen, I don't know much what this program's about, because I've got nothing to do with it. I only know about it what I've read in the paper, so I guess that makes me a typical viewer. Yeah. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, the Government of New South Wales, the people of New South Wales, and the Nine Network welcome you to a concert in your honour. Tonight you see on stage performers who have started their show business careers here in Australia. I say simply, on the show. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. I am strong, I am invincible, I am all and I am free at last. Where are they sitting? <laughs> Who are they? Silly fool, you're the hole. <laughs> Just wanted to have a gawk at them. <laughs> They're gawking at me. Time I look at you, I don't understand Why you let the things you did get so out of hand Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, uh, this evening's show is pretty low-key. <laughs> For those of you who have friends who might be watching another network at this time, please ring them now and tell them the Ten Commandments are happening here. Daddy, this is television. 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 Oh, this is, is this tele... <laughs> no, that's not television. It's not in black and white. <laughs> Television's always in black and white. That's why I like it. Thinks the same way I do. <laughs> and it's all American, too. Why, even way down here in Argent... Australia. Australia. <laughs> even here, you've got your own dynasty and your own Dallas, and your own 60 Minutes. I'm Ian Leslie. I'm George Negus. I'm Ray Martin. Those stories and more tonight on 60 Minutes. Good morning. I'm Jim Whaley. This is Sunday. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sue Kellaway. And I'm Frank Worry. Thanks for being with us this morning on Today, right around Australia. And what a morning it's been. Can you remember what was going through your mind uh, in those moments before the blast off and when, when you actually lifted off Earth and headed for space? Well, I just laid back and uh, just, be, just before ignition, Bob Cripp said to the whole crew, well, stand by for the ride of your life. He was a, that was an understatement, and that's what we were doing. We were just laying back and letting it happen to us. That when those SRBs light off, you really know you're going somewhere. You, you said the claim that you uh, had broken promises. 
really doesn't stand up to any qualitative test. Well, I ran your promises through the computer, oh, and I got a computer printout. <laughs> Perhaps I should stand up to ask this. Now, where have you all come from? Where the Australian okay. crew? Australian? What next? Where the Australian ones? Bloody sir. hell. Why do people stop us in the street almost and tell us that Margaret Thatcher isn't just inflexible, she's not just single-minded, on occasion she's plain pig-headed? and won't be told by Would anyone. Would you tell me who has stopped you in the street and said that? Ordinary Britons. Where? In conversation. But I thought you had just come from Belize. Oh, this is not the first time we've been here. Will you tell me who and where and when? Ordinary Britons in restaurants, How in many? Cabs. How many? I would say at least one in two. I'm sorry, it's an expression I've never heard. Tell me who has said it to you, when These, and These are where. people that we meet in passing. But and we obviously raise the question of the, the state of their country with them. And they tell us, yes, we have a tough part, Prime Minister, but she's a little bit pig-headed. She won't be told by anybody. Isn't this interesting? Even the tone of voice you're using is changing from what you used earlier. When will you personally get to a point... Get to... <laughs> yes, bossy boots! <laughs> when will you personally get to a point where you say to yourself, that's it, I'm sick of this, I'm not recording, I'm not touring, I'm not doing a thing? I'm going to school with Brooke Shields. Perhaps you could give me one of your words of wisdom for each of these people. Pope Paul. He should be behind the bars. Mother Teresa. It is time for her to jump into a lake. The song and the phrase that people have attached to you most regularly probably is the times they are changing. Do you think that they have? I don't know. I have no idea. Did you think, did you think it would at the time? I would, I, you know, I had no idea of knowing. In the guerrilla war, nothing is certain. Originally, we were told we'd face about a five-hour walk to the guerrilla headquarters in the mountains of Mindanao. Well, that five-hour walk has turned into a three-day trek. And sometimes you yourself would be the executioner? Yes. How, how would you execute that man? We skewed the man like this. You're doing exactly... May I finish my question? No, Manette? and in fact, I think that you're going to keep on like this during the entire thing. And you're, you know what you're doing? Excuse me, I don't care to have this part filmed. You know what you're doing? Exactly what the men in the book do. And then you're going to say, you've been accused of man bashing. You're going to... You've been accused. Turn that thing off. I said the interview is over. Well, just answer me that then. Love you all. But Thank you. Just hang on a second, Tammy. Just uh, hang on. It's over. No, you did not keep your part of the bargain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Casey. Don't worry about it, Ron. You'll see it in the ballot box, mate. We'll win. If we were to put to air a story that was not flattering to you, what kind of action would you take there? Well, there have been many stories that have been put to air that are not flattering to us. Um, Sacked anyone? No, we haven't. Would you? And no. No, I don't think so. And you are a television prostitute. It's a lot of charm, Mr Casey. I'm in a lot of charm. And there's a lot of bitch in you. OK, let's, let's sort of move on, on a couple of metres. Yeah. Um, uh, so I ask everyone will but Laurie Oaks will gag me. No. You'll be interviewing me and Dan Quayle for the rest of your life. It was going to be a serious interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're all in this together. The old, the young, the bold, the bald, the good, the bad and the ugly. The Australians, together for the first time, through the magic of high technology. What can go wrong? Hey, but you come here, you were offering $5,000 no, 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 to no. people to say people are fakes. You said Doris Stokes is no, a fake. No, no, I you say Yuri Gell is a fake. fake. No, you came here and you've given never, everybody a lot of lip never. service. No, 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 and you haven't done anything I except show said, us a lot of tricks that you I learned out of your two-bit act that you're not I working never in. Saw, I never saw... I have never said You that. did so. You said no, he was a I fake. Didn't. You called him a two-bit no. you called him a two-bit magician. You no, said he, was a, he was a fake and you said he didn't I'm not it defending you, Regella. What magician. I am defending is you. You come over here with this big reputation. You give us a lot of lip service about all the stuff that you're going to prove. You go against a lady like Doris Stokes, who never harmed anybody in her whole life, and you call her a charlotte and a fake. You know you a said, great deal about it. Yes, I do. You said that she was a liar yeah, on the no, radio. No. You called her a liar. No. And that woman would no, lie to I anybody. And I don't know whether she's right or wrong, I but she would lie to anybody. And we're going for a commercial break, and you can <laughs> talk. We'll be back with Diana Trapp. The bigger stars call up the bigger fantasies. 
I mean, I, I wasn't going to waste six months making a movie and not have a succumb, was I? If I can make somebody happy, it's okay with me. Listen, I have a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. But I'm, talking, I'm talking about my mother. Oh. <laughs> you see me all right? Yes, we can see you fine in all your shimmering Do I lose splendor. any of the hole in my chin when I bounce off the satellite? No. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. I, that, that would have to be the most... What would you call that? A dimple or a cleft or what? I call it a hole in my chin. Is that... <laughs> you want me... Obviously, you want me to make some sort of comment on your outfit and your crimped hair. Yes, well, I thought so. I thought I sort of... I saw a tape back, you know, the last time I was on. Yeah. And I thought I looked sort of like a rather overweight lady die. I've had so many babies with women I've never met. <laughs> If I asked you the original question, we'd be involved we be in the original it. sin. Yes, okay. right. Yeah. You came before the Rolling Stones came, actually. I mean, your career started... I think I came oh, before yeah. everybody. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got you, right? Yeah. <laughs> These executives were in the bar with the gin and tonics, and along at the end was another hairy guy who kept looking over and giving us the old familiar. And I was wondering what it was all about. And he eventually made his way along mm. till he was next to me, and he said, "I'm really glad you guys are here." And I said, "Why?" He said, "I thought I was the only freak in here." <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, "You can join the company if you like." Oh, great, great. He yeah. said, "I've got a load of dope upstairs." And I said, "Oh, it's okay, man. I'm alright." <laughs> just. just Feel welcome, you know what I mean? Uh, he said, yeah, I'm sorry, man. He said, I suffer from inverted vertigo. I said, what's that? He said, when I'm not high, I'm frightened. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, eh? <laughs> Incidentally, I must apologize. When I shook your hand, I... I yeah, it was a bit messy there, right? Yes. Uh, There's a bit that? of cheese on it. <laughs> I, uh, I've just been to a tasting at the Australian Cheese Board. I, uh, I sit on the cheese board, as a matter of fact. <laughs> And that can be uncomfortable, those little flags get up yeah. your ass. Right. Uh, uh, tell them uh, my bra size. No, I, I'm doing that in my act here. Will you stop doing my regular jokes? <laughs> I, do, I do a whole thing on you. You know that. And I said, uh, Phyllis has got a great sense of humor. Somebody asked her a bra size the, the other day, and she said, 32 long. <laughs> Come on out here, uh, Ronnie. Uh, Wonderful. Nice I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. I just thought I'd pop down and say hello and just see what was happening, you know? <laughs> I didn't understand it. I mean, they, they, we've installed facilities, haven't we? We've installed the flush toilets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just won't use them, sir. Why don't you think they'll use them? Well, I just think they simply refused you. Well, I don't, you know, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I was never told about this. No. I, did you know? No, I did not know about it, sir. No, it was never mentioned. Not once at the job centre, sir. No, no. And it's never mentioned on the country practice on the television, is it? No. no. <laughs> you never get Bob Hatfield saying, oh, dear, oh, law, the cows won't use the flush toilets, do we? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I typical Channel 7 show. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> I saw his programme where they said that there is grounds for believing that there might be intelligent life on the other side. What, you mean on Channel 10? <laughs> Channel 10, be realistic, Sid. Other life on Channel 10, cool. <laughs> You walk along like that, here you go. That's. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 no. When you do it like that, you've got to keep it there while you talk. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. All right. Oh, just for this. Yeah. <laughs> I love beer, and, and uh, one thing I like about the Australian beers, they make it in this big can, so you can have one can of beer, and uh, and you can <laughs> tell people that you just only had one. Yeah. <laughs> the size of four of ours. I, I was coming up the elevator here, you know, and there was a, a little a lady there, yeah. nice looking lady. She looked up at me and she said, "You look like my third husband," and I said, "How many times you been married?" She said, "Twice." <laughs> He drank 104 pints in 24 hours? Uh, in, in, in uh, 48. But that was nights as well. Yes. I kicked out the crumpet. Did you? Yes. <laughs> you and Curtis had a lovely test, I understand, for your drag <laughs> outfits. <laughs> you heard about that. Yeah. It's true. And I had my back to the audience and I was wiggling my bum as I want to do on the stage. You know? and then I realized it was pointed right at the royal box. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're not really supposed to turn your back on a queen, but, well, that's a good idea. Right? I'm a happy man. I made my choice in life. I chose to settle down. I chose to take a wife. I told you, I told you, what a woman in love can do. National 9 News has been there whenever history was being made. Tonight, we're going to look back at some of the unforgettable events and the people who helped shape them over the past quarter of a century. Well, I just yelled out, has anyone got a torch? Dingo's got my baby. Nothing quite like it had ever been seen in Alice Springs before. After the Chamberlains arrived at the courthouse and held talks with their counsel, all eyes in the crowded public gallery turned to the cameras and lights that were set up to record Australia's first ever coronial finding. I doth find that Azaria Chantal Lorraine Chamberlain, a child then of nine weeks of age and formerly of Mount Isa, Queensland, met her death when attacked by a wild dingo whilst asleep in her family's tent at the top camping area, Ayers Rock, shortly after 8pm on the 17th of August 1980. The birth of Candace Elizabeth Reed at Melbourne's Royal Women's Hospital was Australia's first using the in vitro fertilisation technique. By the time young Candace celebrated her first year of life, test tube researchers were reporting an average of one new pregnancy each week, giving hope to thousands of women previously unable to conceive. To Ash Wednesday in Adelaide began as a deceitfully soft morning for news. There was a dust storm coming over the city and one or two small bushfires, but otherwise it was ordinary summertime, almost. The first whisper of what was to come arose shortly before noon when a fire was reported just south of the city. Others came quickly from the north in the Adelaide Hills, in the southeast, and on the other side of the mountains. Within two hours, major fires were burning on six fronts. The early afternoon was besieged with the wailing of alarms and the smell of smoke and panic. At the moment, I'm watching my house burn down. 
I'm sitting out on the road in front of my own house where I've lived for 13 or 14 years. And, and uh, God damn it, it's just beyond belief. I, my own house. The dawn of the next day after Ash Wednesday brought with it a sight that had nothing to do with the world as it had been known on the previous morning. The recognition from yesterday of towns and bush and mountains was gone. It was not Australia anymore. It was not anywhere. There was no sleep for the hundreds of revellers kissing and dancing their way through a bubbly breakfast this morning. A shower of champagne began an hour before the race finished and the scene was more like New Year's Eve than a sedate wealthy yacht club. Perth Lord Mayor Keith Michael promised a ticker tape parade for the Australia 2 crew when they arrive home and Prime Minister Bob Hawke gave Australia an unofficial holiday to celebrate the victory. God, any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up the day is a bum. <laughs> it was one o'clock and the first of a series of car bomb blasts were rocking the centre of Melbourne. The first major explosion ripped apart a car parked outside the Russell Street Police Complex. Moments later, the other blasts, up to four of them, followed. Police believe one of them may have been in a second parked car. In the chaos of acrid smoke and shattered debris, at least 19 people lay injured, three of them seriously. Two of the badly hurt were police officers. Rescue workers rushed in to help the dazed and bleeding injured. Most of them were passers-by, innocent victims of Melbourne's first taste of the sort of terrorism that until today belonged to the other side of the world. Good evening, and this city remains stunned by yesterday's massacre. There's already been action from a tearful Premier Kane with the promise to ban the sale of all semi-automatic weapons. It was a semi-automatic carbine that 22-year-old Frank Vitkovic used to slaughter eight innocent people in the Australia Post headquarters in Queen Street. After slaying the four people on the 11th floor, an Australia Post assistant manager, who will be recommended for a bravery award but was too distressed to be interviewed today, grappled with Vitkovic and grabbed the gun from him. A second person hid the weapon in a refrigerator in the nearby staff kitchen. Vitkovic broke free and smashed his way through the window. The assistant manager grabbed the gunman by the ankles in an attempt to stop him plunging to his death. His action in disarming the killer has been praised by postal officials and police. The nightmare that's become known as the Hoddle Street Massacre began shortly after 9.30. Little more than a quarter of an hour later, it's all over. Six people are dead, another 18 are wounded, and Victoria has suffered the most appalling night of violence in its history. There's a massive police hunt for the killers who senselessly slaughtered two young policemen on a routine job in South Yarra at dawn today. They died from shotgun blasts to the head and back as they checked an abandoned car. With much of the suburbs sealed off, police then began a house-to-house -house search for the gunman. They're also looking for a weapon he may have dumped as he fled. Local schools were also immediately checked, as were all surrounding parks and gardens. Police teams also scoured the banks of the Yarra, while early morning motorists were stopped and asked for help. It's hard to imagine that only yesterday morning this was one of Newcastle's fashionable hotels. The owners had just spent $300,000 on renovations. The tenant in this room moved out just half an hour before the quake hit. More than 300 police, ambulance drivers, firemen and emergency services were at the scene, but the task seemed endless. When it was over, there were 13 dead, 167 injured and damage in the multi-millions. The owner Coote's heart transplant came with only hours to spare. Without it, doctors say she would not have been here today. In time of crisis, to make that decision, to give somebody else an opportunity to live, I think that's the greatest gift that you can give people. I'll be back tomorrow night at half past six with more National Nine News. Until then, may your news be good news and good night. There are over 1,000 technicians, cameramen, production people and presenters scattered all over the country just waiting for me to shut up so that they can get on with the show. Well, I will, when I'm ready. Of course, there's no guarantee that it'll all go without a hitch either, but then this is live television at its most complex. And there's one thing I know a little bit about, and that's live television. Anything can happen, and most likely will. Tonight's telecast represents a great achievement in television technology, which tonight will link an entire nation and I, for one, wish all the crews and presenters, indeed everyone, all the best. Right, is everybody 
ready. Okay, let's get on with it. In fact, let's get right to the heart of it. Dame Edna, what do you think of the Bicentennial? I've been trying to get excited about the Bicentennial. Who hasn't been trying to get excited about it in Australia and all over the world? It's not an easy concept to get excited about. This nation that we call Australia today could hardly have started under more difficult or more doubtful circumstances. And yet 200 years later, as a result of our forebears and what we've done ourselves, we now have a strong, proud, free, independent nation. On the occasion of this first day of Australia's bicentenary, my thoughts are very much with you. My own message to you today is directed not only to those of you who have family links with Britain, but to all Australians who are preparing to celebrate the bicentenary year. The American people join me in sending you our warmest and best good wishes. Our two peoples have enjoyed 200 years of trust, friendship and good times together. Well, a big bang is in prospect. In joyful strains then let us sing Advance Australia Fair And now, here's the star of our show, Ray Matton. That's a lot more applause than I ever got at the start of a 60 Minutes story. This is, this is what I'm looking at. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a, you know, a publicity photo, but I feel like I'm talking to the weatherman. <laughs> Did you ever have an affair with a boring man? Oh, God, yes. Did you? <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> Would you marry again? Would I? Just yeah. ask me. <laughs> what are you doing after the show? <laughs> Do you have two different, different colour eyes? Yes. One blue eye and one green eye. Yes. <laughs> it comes the camera. It's like, <laughs> I've, but I've never read that. I've never read anything about that. Why don't... That's remarkable. Because that's... nobody ever looks in your eyes when they talk to you. But they're quite beautiful. Thank you. Are you married? Yes, you are. <laughs> Would you like to hear him do Elmer Fudd's yeah. version? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. I'm driving in my car. <laughs> I turn on the radio. Uh, I pull you a little closer. <laughs> you just say no. Uh, Is it true that, in fact, your elder sisters used to, uh, uh, their girlfriends used to use you for kissing practice? <laughs> Well, yeah, I used to, uh, they used to put me up on the sink and my sister's friends would take turns going in and closing the door and, you know, they're teaching me how to kiss. <laughs> sort of a warm-up, you know, for their boyfriends. And, uh... <laughs> how do you get a job like that? <laughs> I'm quite happy what, doing what I'm doing. When the day comes that, that I get annoyed with it all or, you know, get really aggravated with things, I'll stop. Will you really? That will be will the you day be able to... to... It's not a roller coaster out of control. Will you be able to jump off? Um, well, recently I tried to slow down the publicity and, of course, once the ball's rolling, it's very difficult to stop or almost impossible. But I, I mean, one thing I've always been fully aware of is this is a job. Um, it could end tomorrow. You can be riding high and be no one the next day. So I'm, I know that's going to happen. Well, what it, it could happen. Would it be fair to say that you're, you're a lady who needs men? Do you need men? Do you For need what? companions? Companions. <laughs> Something men, some things men can do that nobody else can. You say you don't like it. <laughs> I say you're a wire. <laughs> when you, you realised that you had these assets? I noticed that when I used to go jogging, come back with cut black eyes. <laughs> Last week we were told that ying tong means I want sex now. <laughs> I need 14 hours notice for some. <laughs> Would you date uh, ten women a week? 
<laughs> Wait, but a week. <laughs> a day. <laughs> a week. <laughs> no, God, man. You know, you have to stop and eat once in a while. <laughs> Thank God you still want me. Um, no, I'm afraid we don't have any toilets. Um, if you'd read your Bible, you might have seen that it was damnation without relief. Were you embarrassed about writing the sex scenes? No, not at all. Were you embarrassed reading them? <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Oh, I bet he's got a cute bum. <laughs> My name is Georgia Diamonds, a girl's best friend, and I want you to vote for me tomorrow, right? Now, I know you've probably never heard of me, and I have left my campaign launch a little bit late, but uh, you must understand I've been terribly busy. <laughs> Had an awful lot of shopping to do, and then we had the tennis finals. <laughs> and then, of course, I got married. <laughs> and then, of course, my husband died. <laughs> Terrible. He died of exhaustion. But when we get... It's like fire. Yeah, now you're coming to me. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for television's big night. The TV Week Logie Awards coming to you live from the State Theatre. And there are many unscrupulous people who will do anything to get on television. Our next guest is such a man. Please welcome Paul Hogan. Good evening, viewers. And good evening, fellow workers. Tonight for you is a working night. Now you play your cards right tonight and you can give your career a nice little boost. However, make the wrong move and you could disappear off the television screens faster than a dill on sale of the century. <laughs> don't fall into the trap of whinging to the press that people don't take you seriously as an actor. Because as an actor, you're not that serious. Uh, I want to thank uh, the film crew um, and the Channel 9 floor crew. Uh, I pay those guys a lot of money to keep me in focus. I used to get a Logie every year for a comedy show, uh, mainly because I was the only nomination. <laughs> no one else was making comedy shows. And I turned up one year and there were two other nominations. There was one of those sitcoms on the ABC that nobody watches and uh, Kingswood Country on Channel 7. I think I, I... The last time I was here, I was with Channel 2. And I, I think, really, I should thank uh, the... Linda Gray. Thank Linda Gray. She says, no, that's later on. <laughs> that's a bird. It's both in black, of course, it's yes. one who shows. But I... I think I should thank the, uh, the man who in encouraged me, who really made me uh, make up my mind to go to Channel 7. Because, uh, no, it gave me an opportunity to you know, extend my career. And I would like to thank very much uh, Mr. Alan Bateman, uh, who was my boss at Channel 2. At the same time, start positive rumours about your own career. Things like, they say that Simon Townsend is on the shortlist for the new James Bond. Congratulations, Thank you guys. so much. Here is your Logie. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> um, that's terrific. I just... <laughs> that's great. Um, my... Um... <laughs> There's my wife. <laughs> Have you seen the show? <laughs> if you're nominated for a Logie and you don't win, remember you will be on camera. <laughs> now, use this inconvenience as a chance to polish your acting skills. Oh, look, there are so many people to thank, uh, and I don't want to bore you all night, but, uh, but I'll try. Uh, on with the embarrassment. Uh, unfortunately, John can't be here. He's working on a film in Australia. Lucky bugger. Uh, <laughs> well, I forgot to say before, like, uh, thanks very much to Film Australia and Channel 7 for doing that job. And I wish I could no remember the name of the lady that wrote that, because she's right on, you know? She's there. <laughs> I 
don't know what we... I think we have grown up now in the Australian industry. We, we, we're almost getting to a point where we can find our own Michael Coles, which I think is magnificent. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Britt Eklund. What a wonderful welcome. Ah, what Thank a wonderful you. woman. How are you? I'm very well. You know, I was sharing table with your wife and... Uh... My former wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. You were looking down. I don't know whether it was me or your wife you're looking uh, at. I'm writing a book about you. Oh. <laughs> I love you. You are beautiful. What a fabulous dress. Is that any particular style? Well, it's called fallout. Fallout, really? Yes, if I lean over, I fall out. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong with it. <laughs> Don't waste it, honey. I'm here. <laughs> I know. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you look absolutely magnificent. You know, you would be... You've got everything we require for Australian television. You're tall, you're American. You, 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 you just... Don't you start tonight. I, 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 Lou, you asked before the show, what do I have to do? Uh, and the answer is, Lou, anything you want to. Okay. <laughs> You've seen what happened on TV. Just don't get me angry. No, no, no. Well, the, la the last thing in the world I'd like to do, Lou, is to get you angry. One of the most successful action TV series ever to come to Australia was Starsky and Hutch. Well, Hutch is on duty this evening, but Starsky got the night off. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Michael Glaser. I always felt that you and I would have made a... You know, uh, you know, well, there was lots of... Yeah? You like it? It's yours. No, I mean, it was a... It was a chat. We're going to touch chance. that one. It would have been chat, you know, for us. I mean, there's a lot of action in the series, wasn't there? Yes. You know, you might think that we uh, Australian actors, I can say that after Fatty Finn, uh, <laughs> we don't know all about that action. Let me show you. This is what we've learned. Now, uh -huh. you right for it? It's going to be pretty heavy. Oh, 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 we're going to do something. Yeah. Oh, okay. You ready? You sure you're ready? <laughs> Would you like to try an American style? You sure? I'm positive. You trust the jet lag, do you? Yeah, of course I do. I haven't got it. <laughs> and the wine has been keeping me afloat. <laughs> well, you All right. That. I'll do my shot. You ready? Yeah, well, just hang on a sec. Okay. Yeah. Give ready? me the soup, whatever you do. All right. Well, watch this hand over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What a beautiful idea that was of our producers. There, he just glanced me. We have a number of super guests to introduce to you this evening. The one now who's about to, to walk on stage, I'm particularly proud to introduce to you. This may give you some sort of clue. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Randall. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for that warm, generous, open-hearted reception. Sometimes they stand. Let me open this. I wish I could open it with the aplomb of little Tony Randall. Isn't he gorgeous? I love Canadians, and he could... He could twist my arm any night he liked. A bit overwhelming, aren't I, Bert? I, I don't think so at all. I'm a little bit overwhelming. Not for me. I mean, but I had a phone call from Mr. Hawke. He rang me up. Well, really? very recent, thrilled with a new Gallup poll. Seventy-eight percent of Australians adore me. He said he did. I said, darling, you only need another twenty-two percent to be neck and neck with me, possibly. <laughs> I said, I did. The winner is Bert Newton. What 
a popular selection it's been. And, uh, Bert, it's not often I yield a platform to a bloke to make a speech, but I think it's your turn, mate. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thanks very much. Thank you. To Rowena and to Daryl and to Mike and to, uh, to Tony, um, I'm sorry for you that I had to take it off, but for me, I'm bloody thrilled. <laughs> we'll now find out who gets the gold. The winner is Daryl Summers. I had been told, in fact, by several sources that uh, it wasn't me this year. Uh, so, to them. The winner is. Ooh, I'm excited. Oh, I'm so pleased. It's Bert Newton. And the winner is. Kylie Minogue. Oh my God. Mickey, I feel quite comfortable up. Come and stand next to yes, me. It's a girl that fits you me. Know, they always put these up too high, don't they? Yes, it's all right. Were, always... were we ever married? <laughs> we could think about it. Oh, I don't know where to start with this. Um, I hope I can uh, do the industry, pr industry proud in some way. I know I'm just learning and it's good to be with all of you who have been in the industry for so long and I know I can learn a lot from you all and I so far have. Um, maybe I'll be back here in a few more years time, I hope so, and thanks to TV Week, thanks to all the viewers for your support and um, I don't know what else to say, thanks very much. <laughs> Good night. Laura, I'm a misty lad. To. That's right. I love it when he cries. <laughs> oh dear. Graham, I must ask you something. Last night, when you said that word. What word? That word. Well, how can I, if I don't know the word? The one that means, you know, uh, well, the one that means orifice in the lower uh, back. Ah, yeah. Well, although we all heard the word clearly, you yeah. covered your mouth when you said it each time. Why did you do that? Oh, you mean I went, huh, like that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, no, that's, that's so as not to offend uh, deaf people <laughs> and lip readers. You know I, I loathe anything of a coarse nature, John. <laughs> but what about all the people, what about all the people who aren't deaf or lip readers? Them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't let me hold you up, Kenny. <laughs> Go for your life, Cobber. Could you take your hands off my knee? <laughs> Who's that disturbing you, Ken? <laughs> it is distracting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't know. It's nice and warm. It is. <laughs> I've only just, we've been doing this, how long have we been doing this? Oh, about eight weeks. Eight weeks, and I've just discovered if you do that, it's warm. <laughs> Kenny has warm knees. Now, a Greek lesson in the office. This, I'm picking up the pencil. Yep. Molivi. 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 Yeah. I'm picking up the pencil. Yeah. Molivi. Yeah. To... <laughs> this is going well. <laughs> Molivi. Molivi. And now I write on the writing paper. Harti. 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 Yeah. Harti. Yeah. This is Graham with his Molivi. <laughs> writing on her tea. <laughs> now I put it in an envelope. Fuck you, Lord. Right. right. <laughs> so I've written with the Molivi on the her tea. Now pass me an envelope. Fuck you, Lord. <laughs> oh, 
All right, I'll get it myself. <laughs> I've had a very nice time. As I've always said, being a chum is fun. Good night.